Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose and today we're going to be talking about the short story Brownies written by ZZ Packer. Now before I go into the summary analysis of this work, please remember to leave a like, subscribe and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. In this short story we get introduced to the Brownie troop. Now when you think about Brownies, you basically think about Girl Scouts, you think about these little girls that are extremely helpful, that um, they're going to help people, they're um, going to be kind to one another and just be welcoming to everybody that they encounter. That's not really what we see within this short story. That's not who we meet within this short story. Um, in the short story, we in the Brownie Troop, we have this group of Brownies that it's pre pretty much a group of black girls. And they are they have their natural leaders by the name of Arnetta and Octavia. Octavia and Arnetta are kind of like the head or the heads of the the, the group. Um, Arnetta and Octavia, when they talk, everybody listen, and they pretty much drive the group to do um, what they want to do. And the short story, what happens is, is that there's a another um, troop of brownies called the Troop Nine O Nine that that comes into camp, and basically. Um, Arnetta and Octavia, they don't really like them, and the other girls don't like them either because they kind of resemble or symbolize um, certain things that the black girls don't have. For instance, we get this scene where they're describing the, the white girls and they have um, like Disney stickers, Disney princesses, um, you know, rainbow stickers, um, different little things that, that little girls should have, but the thing is like, um, in the short story, you kind of get this idea or this concept of um, racial inequality and, and um, social economic status that kind of creeps into the short story where you see that, um, you know, white kids have certain privileges and certain access to wealth and, and money that the black girls don't really have. And you kind of see that the black girls, they kind of dislike the, the white girls for that. So the story goes on. And um, something happens that kind of like starts a conflict and Arnena and Octavia, they're kind of the instigators within the short story. And for some reason, someone heard that the white girls called one of the black girls uh, the N-word and this kind of like starts a, a conflict. And it's pretty much a conflict uh, from the, the black girl side or from the black troop side because the white girls... Um, they're not really into this conflict. They're just going around about their business. And then our Octavia and Arnetta, they're the instigators. They're saying that, you know, we have to get revenge. Throughout the short story, we see them plot um, their revenge and how they're going to get revenge on the white girls. And, you know, the, the thing that's, that's really crazy and that's really interesting about the short story, you know, you're reading all of this and this anger and this um, revenge talk that's going on. Well, these are supposed to be these perfect little Girl Scouts that, you know, are all about helping each other. So it really throws you off that you see them, that they're plotting revenge and they're plotting um, basically a, a, a rivalry, a conflict, something that they're going, they're going to get payment uh, for, for the wrong that the white girls did. So the story goes on. And during this one night, what Octavia and I are in. Arnetta come up with is that they're going to go into the bathroom where the white girls are. That's pretty much where they can meet the white girls without adult supervision and basically teach them a lesson. And not everybody in the black troop and the black little girl troop, not everybody wants revenge. Not everybody wants to teach the white girls a lesson. Um, they just kind of they have to follow Octavia and her long hair. They got to follow Arnetta because they're the leaders of the group. Um, our narrator is Laurel. They call her Snot within the short story because she had an episode when she was in first grade. Um, so she's kind of like a, a timid person, a quiet person, and so is Daphne. And Daphne's kind of like the girl that the black girls are trying to stand up for. But Daphne is a very reserved, very quiet girl that she goes along with the whole plan, the whole idea, but you know she doesn't really want to be there. So during this one night, they go into the bathroom where the white girls are and, you know, they start to say, you know, you called us the N word. Uh, we're here to teach you a lesson. We're here to get a revenge. And it's like this awkward situation where the black girls don't really want to fight them. Arnetta and Octavia are really the instigators that are trying to get revenge. The other black girls are just like standing behind them and kind of like nervous. And the white girls, the strange thing that happens or the thing that throws everybody off is that they find out that the white girls are 
disabled or they say retarded within the short story and you kind of see that um this one white girl the, the biggest one basically all the other ones circle around her and she's kind of like the leader of troop 909 and she's like standing up for the rest of the girls and when Arnetta and Octavia realize this, they try to back away. They try to say, you know, don't tell the adults about this um, because they see that they're they're disabled or I guess retarded. And, you know, they don't want to bully them or attack them anymore. And the white girl is is pretty much says, like, I'm going to tell on you. And they're like, don't don't tell on us. You don't want to be a tattletale. And she says, I like to be a tattletale. And then the adults get involved with it. The black girls get in trouble. Um, and we get kind of like this explanation that sometimes the white girls, because they're disabled, they have certain disabilities where they repeat certain things that they say. Um, they might have said the N word, but they don't really mean it because they're just repeating whatever they hear. Um, so Arnetta and Octavia, you know, they, they, they feel bad um, because the thing is, it's probably them that probably said the N word and the white girls repeated it um because we kind of see like the black girls they curse and they say things that they shouldn't say within the short story um and so the story kind of ends with them going back home and they, they the black girls they kind of feel bad about what happened um but the the thing is um the white girls they kind of get punished because they have disabilities and their leader the the adult leader for them kind of like takes away their bathroom privileges and they kind of lose their independence because sometimes they just don't let you go to the bathroom by yourself when you have certain disabilities. And so, you know, they're trying to fight for their independence. The white girls are just trying to find their independence. They're just trying to be themselves and they were attacked and accused of something that they probably didn't do. Um, so it's a very interesting short story and it teaches you a lot about, um, how class society can affect the way that people interact with each other, even individuals such as little girls who are supposed to be kind and nice and warm towards each other. Like even through the short story, you get these like little sweet songs about friendship and um, being good to other people, um, and even about Jesus and, and Christianity and all of that. Uh, but the black girls they didn't really follow that; they just wanted to get. They just went to re retaliate. The thing is, like, I don't blame either group because of the fact that the black girls, they're living in, in the short story. They're living in a reality where they feel like they're always at the bottom. They feel like they're always being attacked by other races, by other groups. Um, and so when the white girls came, come, they come off the bus and they have all these nice things. They instantly believe that, you know, these individuals might think that they're better than us. They might try to to, to bully us or they, you know, they come from a better part of society than us. So um, they, they probably, when they first saw them, when they saw the stickers and all the nice things that they had, um, you know, they, they just saw an enemy. They just saw someone that is going to come in and just have a better time than them. So they try to defend themselves or they try to protect themselves as best as they can. Um, so you kind of see like the impact of society on, on Arnetta and Octavia to the point where no matter who they encounter, no matter who they come across, they're always going on the defensive and trying to defend themselves and trying to basically get revenge. But at the same time, the same way that they just look at these girls and determine that they're an enemy is something that's extremely bad because uh, the white girl, the Troop 909, they were just trying to be themselves. They weren't attacking anybody. They weren't um going against them or trying to challenge them in any way because the, the the leader or the big girl that's in the white troop she she said no one said anything no one you know intentionally tried to hurt anybody um you guys are the one instigating you guys are the one that are creating a problem so it's a good short story those are my thoughts on it it's it, it teaches you a lot about class and culture and um the way that you know, sometimes you can react when it comes to things like race and um, certain words like the N-word. So that's my summary and explanation analysis of this short story. Please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment. And I'll see you guys in the next video.